So uh, you'll now be looking at the FireMapper portal. So this is a um, this is part of our subscriptions, and it's a web-based uh, platform that uh, allows you to see the, the same things as as you get in FireMapper on iOS or Android, but it gives you some additional tools to configure the subscription and and uh, and also uh, there's certain things you can do which are easier to do on a computer than they are to do on a, on a tablet. Uh, so you need to log into this. You have a, a username and a password. And uh, there's a, a lot of security and configuration uh, wrapped around this as well that we can tweak to, to suit individual customer requirements. Uh, but in the interest of, interest of time, uh, we'll, we'll gloss over that and go straight into the, uh, the interesting stuff. What you're looking at here, this is the, the shared maps list. Uh, and you can see that this uh, looks the same as the list of maps that I had on my device. Uh, the Wheeler Creek HR here, uh, you can see it's last modified two minutes ago by me. And you get a quick summary of the um, contents of that, that map. I've got some tools here to be able to uh, download. So in a variety of formats. And we were talking earlier about the, the interagency sharing functionality. So to give you an idea of, of how we structure our customers, uh, I'll just click this little edit button here and you'll see that I have a, a structure here with a bunch of brigades down the bottom, rolling up into districts and then regions and then a state. So this is all fictitious, obviously, because it's, it's part of our demo configuration. But for our larger customers, this is this is how we allow entire districts or entire agencies to to function um, and be able to access each other's maps. So, for instance, if I wanted this map to be visible by all the brigades in the beaches district, and I just tick this box here, and that take, takes effect in, takes effect instantaneously. So each of the uh, the brigades in the Beaches District will now see um, that map on their devices and be able to work work on it. Uh, so one uh, quite cool capability that I'll talk about here quickly before I hand over to Stephen. So we have the ability to create uh, create uh, magic tokens shall we say, that allow you to give temporary access to a, a FireMapper map to anyone that has a web browser in a restricted manner for a certain period of time. So I can hit this create token button. I can say how long I want it to be active. And it's gonna give access to the Wheeler Creek HR. I can say whether or not we want people to be able to edit it, see locations of, of appliances and access photos. And once I create that, I get a QR code that I can hand to anyone and they will then be able to log in and see that map. Uh, so good examples we've seen where that works really well uh, is in a, uh, uh, in a situation where maybe the, uh, the fire brigade need to manage evacuation and you can give that code over to the police so that they can um, see on their machines as well exactly what's happening on the ground. Uh, this also allows different agencies to, to exchange uh, QR codes so that they can watch each other's maps as well. So really, really powerful functionality. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll hand over to, to Stephen now, who's going to take us through uh, the portal map viewer. All righty. Thank you, Conrad. Um, I assume you'll put me in the spotlight. Excellent. All right. Let's share our screen. So, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Stephen. I'm a software engineer and primarily working on the portal map, which is what I wanted to demo for you all today. Um, so, this is our portal map. It's it's web based and just like the apps, it gives you the important thing to note is it gives a 
it shows real time what devices are doing on the ground in Viamapper. So we can see these same uh, vehicles moving around. We can see the same features that uh, users on the ground or back at headquarters are adding to the map. Um, right, so on the top left of our screen, you'll see a bunch of different tabs and these contain most of the information and the controls relevant to the portal map. So, uh, oh, apologies. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention beforehand as well is this, this data here, it's simulated, but this, these location uh, updates from devices could be coming directly from FireMapper devices on the ground. Uh, but we also have the ability to, as Comrade mentioned, to integrate with Track Plus and the, uh, the NAFC firefighting aircraft tracks, or also um, customer location systems, such as GPS enabled digital radios and the like. We have the ability to, to integrate those and you will see them on the map, just like these vehicles here. Uh, back to the sidebar over here. The first tab in the list is the activity feed. Uh, the activity feed is basically an audit trail of who did what and when with this map. Now, if I'm interested in a particular update, such as this one here, I can click and hold on that update and the portal map will highlight those features for me um, that, that were made in that update to uh, make it easier to, to, to sort between them. So I can look at, oh, those bin deleters deleted, my bad. Um, all right, the next tab I'd like to show you is the layers tab. Now in the portal map, uh, we've provided a latitude longitude grid overlay. So for example, if you're walk working with aircraft crews, I might wanna have this enabled, but for today, I'm gonna be working mainly with ground teams. So I'm gonna add the, the UTM overlay to the map. Over here, we also have a list of base layers we can add to the map. And this list, um, sorry, this last list automatically adapts to different parts of the world, which base layers are available. And we also have the ability to show um, customer owned base layers. And if you don't have the ability to host those, those data sources yourselves, uh, we can, we have the ability to do that as well. All right. Um, there's some other functionality in this tab. The only one I'll mention now is say you have FireMapper up on the big screens at incident control, you might want to have larger features or much larger features. And you can also change the brightness of the base layer to improve contrast for some uh, very bold colored base layers such as satellite. All right. Now, next thing I'd like to talk about is my favorite part, which is the edit functionality. So we finished planning our hazard reduction and we've lit up. So this proposed hazard reduction area, I'm gonna modify that and change it to, a, to an actual burn area. And it's that easy. Now, conveniently around this time, Conrad on the ground should um, add some add some data that he's seeing for me. So, so comrades, oh, he's found some spot fires. Uh, okay, so we've got some, some spot fires within the burn area. We've also got some spot fires that have uh, jumped to the control lines there. Um, comrade, could you please also add the, uh, the fire edge around those, those spot fires on the exterior? And so you'll notice I'm as soon as Conrad asks, uh, sorry, as soon as Conrad uh, adds, adds these features that he's seeing on the ground, literally less than two seconds later, they're popping up on my screen. So it's that, that real time situational awareness that, that's very important. Um, <clears throat> righty. And then, you know, as soon as Conrad puts that down, I can select his features, see that, you know, he's drawn it 31 seconds ago. And it gives me some information about the, uh, the, the length of that line. Um, 
I also, over the radio, they might mention, hey, have a look at, um, well, apologies, I've got my Zoom things in the way. Have a look at the spot fire at grid reference 379658. And if I don't want to bother trying to read this UTM overlay here, I can jump into the search bar, type in my 379658. And we've got powerful search capability on this portal. So it'll jump to the closest matching grid reference. I can, um, apologies, I'm gonna move, try and remove all my zoom buttons. Um, and you can see how you can, you can use the search functionality to quickly jump to a, a particular spot fire. Um, all righty. So I'm gonna, try and uh, treat this problem here. So I'm gonna go into the edit tab. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another sector to our map. So we've got Alpha Bravo, I'm gonna add sector Charlie. Let's throw a uh, sector division in here between these two. Um, <clears throat> and these spot fires are now starting to put these houses up under threat. So they were previously defendable assets. I'm going to reclassify those as potentially defendable assets. And it's quick and easy, just like that. Um, alrighty, luckily for us, we've got a C-130 coming in with some retardant. So I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop that retardant at the back of these houses here. So I'm going to draw down, well, let's going to draw down a uh, proposed retardant line here. Go tick. So that's going to be a um, flat drop. And then as soon as I type that in, the helicopter is very inconveniently in the way, but you can see the line, the line labeled there. Uh, the final edit I'm going to make is this burn area, I guess it's uh, gone a little larger than we intended. I can actually click this edit button down here to just edit the uh, small part of this geometry to include include the, the burn so far. So even with a very large shape like this, it's very easy to uh, quickly uh, re redraw parts of the perimeter. Uh, I'd just like to take this moment um, to, to pause for a moment and field any questions anyone had about the uh, edit functionality so far. Um, Dave or Conrad, have they, has any come up? Where is the Zoom? I think we we might just uh, throw to some more throw this throw to the questions right at the end. Absolutely, Even. happy to do uh, that. There's, uh, there's a, a lot to go through here, but we'll we'll get through them all. Thanks, team. All good. Thank you, Conrad. Um. Alrighty. So, oops. Sorry, my computer is being a bit special. Alrighty. So, along with the edit functionality in the portal maps, we also have the export tab. And this is the same kind of options as Comrade showed previously in the, uh, the web portal. So we have a variety of export, for, export formats to uh, integrate with uh, other leading software solutions. Um, this includes the ability to generate geo-reference PDFs that you can import and open in mapping apps such as Avenza. Uh, also on this list, we have a dedicated print preview page. So if I click on that, that takes me to this page here. And so before, if I wanna print a map or, or print a PDF to, to give this out to my, my fireys, I can move the map around, adjust the, adjust the bounds of the area I want to map. I can change the base layer. I can even actually go into the legend and change some of 
change some of the text there before pressing print to uh, to, to generate my map. So that's a, a nice tool there to kind of fine tune ex exactly what you want to, to, to make the best maps possible for your teams. <clears throat> All righty, uh, last tab I'd like to show you before I uh, give you all a break and kudos to you who have kept up so far. Um, just a, a quick quick show off of the, uh, the, the search functionality in the portal. So the search is uh, quite powerful. We can search for um, features by name. So I can look for a boy, boy wall, this one here. I can look for my resources. Sorry, it's a tanker. I can find my resources here. I can also search for feature types. So I can search for ignition points, um, including finding the same uh, photo that, that Comrade uh, showed you all earlier. Uh, and there's not too many photos on this map, but we do have a quite powerful photo bar here that gives you a, a history of the um, the photos in the fire. Um, and I believe as much as I'd like to, to go on about this, that's uh, all I have time to, to show off with the portal map today. So I might throw back to Conrad and any uh, questions people have outstanding.